Almost there. Hold on. Okay. We are good. All right. Well, let's. Uh, it's about uh, six minutes after seven, so we'll open the meeting of the twenty uh, seventh. And uh, everybody's here except for uh, Art, who I talked with today, so he's absent excused. Uh, and you said you didn't have any input, Pam, with regards to any public comment? That's right. I didn't have any. Okay. Any uh, agenda review items, everybody? All right. We've got... Uh, so we've got uh, Art is missing. Uh, it's pretty been even who's who's been seated. Let me seat uh, Will tonight in uh, Art's uh, position. And, Craig uh, isn't here either, George. Pardon me? Craig, Craig still isn't here. Oh, he isn't? No. Oh. All right. Well, then we'll sit the seat uh, John and Will tonight, and uh, hopefully Craig will be able to connect. Uh, any uh, agenda review items? Anybody? So let's uh, let's kick it off with our first uh, number four is a public hearing uh, PZC twenty twenty four special permit location four three zero Main Street application uh, George. Nujame owner Wendy and Mike Winston LLC proposal mixed use building light manufacturing and office small format on first floor three apartments on each second and third floors. You uh, you want to just go over your uh, legal uh, advertising. Yeah. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Winchester Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Monday, July 27, 2020 via the online platform. Zoom for the following applications, PZC 2024 special permit, applicant George Newjame, owner Wendy and Mike Winstead LLC, 430 Main Street, map 110, block 052, lot 022. <laughs> Proposal mixed use building, light manufacturing office, small format on first floor, three apartments on each second and third floors. Meetings are live streamed on YouTube at the following address, it was included. Parties interested in participating during the meeting should email myself, T. Columbia at townofwinchester.org. Ahead of the meeting, questions and or comments may be emailed to that address. At this hearing, interested persons may appear and be heard and written communications will be received. Copies of the above application are on file for public inspection at the Planning and Community Development Office dated at Winchester, Connecticut this 14th day of July, 2020. George Klassen, Chairman. It was published in the Republican American on July 21st, 2020. On July 24th, 2020. It was actually published four times because um, it was published the first two times without the time indicated. Um, and notices were sent to all of the um, abutting property owners. We have certificate of mail. Um, Mr. Newjame appeared before the Architecture Review Committee on Thursday, July 16th, 2020. And those minutes have been uploaded to the Town of Winchester website. Um, they gave a positive referral, um, which he's going to, uh, Mr. Nujame will be reviewing, I'm sure. Um, they, their positive referral was that the applicant would be using the same materials as he had on his bistro. And when they say that they meant for the front facade, um, he, he's going to review, I'm sure, in more detail, but it, um, he's going to have a stainless steel, a brushed stainless steel that um, closely mirrors what he has already on his bistro. Um, okay. Comments were received from the fire marshal, Steve Williams. They were written, I got those today. He had no uh, concerns and Mark Melanson, um, who's working remotely, uh, also communicated that he had no concerns. Okay, fine. Uh, Mr. Nujame, if you could make your uh, presentation, describe what you're proposing to do. All right. So we, um, hi everyone. So we're going to be moving our wholesale food operation next door. Um, 
So half the building would be used as uh, kitchen, storage, uh, shipping, receiving, refrigeration. And uh, the other half would be offices and packing area. Um, so our product will be distributed uh, in New England and we have some product would be distributed nationwide. And uh, so we're looking to expand. Okay. Um. Oh, I want to add one more thing. So the building is going to be USDA approved. So everything's going to fall under their requirement. Uh, everything's going to be up to date, obviously. Um, we'll be doing renovation inside, outside. Um, the section that's on Main Street with the, you know, the sign would look just like our what we have right now, the back would be, uh, there's a loading dock would be the shipping and receiving through the parking lot of the, I'm not sure what to call the parking lot back there. Um, they made right, it a lot behind the uh, Hotel Winchester leading up to the back. Right now, the firehouse. Yeah. Okay. All right. So your area on your description, uh, you've got uh, A is dry storage in the very back corner in that triangular area. Correct. And then you've got the kitchen area is going to be that long narrow section where you've got the loading dock of access, access to it and so forth. Correct. Um, okay. Um, looking at what are you going to do out in the back? Mr. Nujame, as far as we're right now, I, I looked at it today and there's cars parked up against that back area and you've all these go. cars, all these cars, uh, actually they'll be removed. Uh -huh. All of them. They, they're, uh, it's right now it's like a junkyard back there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, in my proposal, uh, we're proposing a walk-in cooler, walk-in freezer. Mm -hmm. um, along the side of the building on the outside um, and uh, all these parking areas right there they'll be all, all the cars being removed because we obviously need access for our loading and unloading sure yeah you gonna do any lighting out and back there Are you going to do any lighting in the back area where that loading dock area is? We follow the code just like we did right now with our building here. Um, we'll, we'll have emergency lights and, uh, and regular light as well. And how will you handle uh, your refuse collection? There's one container out there right now up against the back of that section. Of the we will be uh, we will be using more efficient containers because we'll have a lot of recycling. And uh, so we'll have two of them, one, one for recycling, one for uh, garbage. And there's a plenty of room right there to, to have them. It'll be enclosed as well. And what, how do you, how are you gonna enclose this? Uh, we, we'll fence it in to look nice. And, you know, we're dealing with food. I can't have, garbage around <laughs> okay well what what did you envision uh, for enclosure uh usually usually it's a fence the metal fence with the lattice in them okay so what we've won't... been just just for uh, reference what we've been trying to do is be consistent is we've been trying to use a uh, and if you set the pace over there maybe the rest of that area will take it and <laughs> take it an issue and come up and follow what you're doing but well, our most recent uh, site plan approval is we've been doing a black uh, chain link with back black posts and, they, uh, and the fencing has been at a minimum of six feet tall, but at least a foot above whatever the container height is. Yes, yeah, it will be covered. Uh, whatever the size of the containers are all be uh, covered. I mean, I don't, I, we could use the black uh, post and 
you know, follow the same rules. That's, that's no, okay. we have no problem with that. that if, if you did something like that, maybe we'd have it it'd start catching on in the rat back there because that whole area needs to be improved and you're going to set the pace because you've done a nice job with your restaurant. Absolutely. Uh, now you said something about refrigeration. So that'll be outside the building? It'll be along the side of the building, yes. Um, uh, within, obviously within the property line. Okay. And I believe it's, we have about, we measured there's 15 feet, but we're gonna be using about seven and a half feet of that for refrigeration. Okay, because they, it, you look at our, uh, our reg, I'm sure you've gone through this and probably worked with Pam. On uh, page 129 of our regulations, it's got manufacturing light, which is what you're applying under. Yep. And outdoor storage of goods and materials can't exceed 25% of your building, which you've got a big building that you're working uh, in. So you're, you're not gonna get not, close to that. It will not exceed whatsoever, no. It's, the, the building is 5,300. The, the first floor alone is 5,300 square feet, so. Um, you've got you've got plenty of room i just just bring it up because it is in our uh, you know explanation of uh, some of the terms and so forth so that's uh, uh pam did mention it to me also mark was present at the mm -hmm. there yes it, it will not be more than 25 percent. that's for sure okay all right uh do you have any more comments that you want to make with regards to i, I think this is pretty exciting what you're doing in the town and what you we saw you up at the Eastern States last year and uh, saw what you did there, which was pretty exciting to see you there uh, and to hear that you're expanding in, in your operation. Uh, it's uh, very positive uh, for you and for, for everybody involved with you. Uh, let's, uh, if you don't have any other comments, then let's pass it around. And uh, Peter, if you want to start. Uh, I have none. You've covered everything I had. I was interested about the rubbish containers and fencing. So you covered that, I'm good. Okay. Uh, Will? The only question I was gonna ask was about the refrigeration, but you covered that one also. Okay. Uh, Jerry? No comment. Okay. Uh, John? Uh, just a clarification on the apartments. It says three apartments on each, the second and third floor. I'm assuming that's six apartments. James, that, uh, so you got six apartments in that building above your operations? Uh, uh, yeah, there is apartments. I just don't, personally, I don't know how many apartments upstairs. I know there's a second and third floor. Okay, well, the, the application shows that there's three on each of the floors, so we'll assume that that's, that is correct. Um, that was all I had, thank you. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, any other uh, further comments from the uh, commission? Pam, have you had any, you said you did not have any input from the uh, public with regard to participation? No, no, I, you know, I, I see there's a, uh, I'll unmute everyone when you go, when you seek public comment, just, you know. Um, okay. There's a couple residents here, I think. Oh, good, all right. Well, why don't we, uh, I think every, the commission satisfied? Yes. So yes. far anyways, all right. Then why don't we, uh, why don't you mute, mute us and bring anybody in that has uh, a need to comment. I don't think you have any comments. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, this is a Zoom thing. It'd be good if somebody uh, had, had that, that they could write to you, Pam, that uh, it, it to indicate so that we won't miss somebody and have an opportunity. But uh, okay, without uh, unless somebody has anything else, then uh, I'd like to take a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Will is a second. Any discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing, raise your hand. 
Okay, unanimous. Thank you. We'll uh, actually we don't have big big agenda, Mr. Nujame tonight, so that we uh, we should be able to move forward here and see where we're going. Uh, okay, the next uh, next item on our agenda is uh, under old business is a special permit 20-23, which is a special permit public hearing, which is scheduled for August 24th. And I just want to mention that uh, I think Pete brought it up when they, the registered citizen has twice now had articles that indicated that we had approved a special permit for this, which is obviously an error. Um, just so if anybody's listening and watching our, our proceedings, our normal procedure is to accept an application for a special permit and then establish a date for the public hearing. We don't take an action on it until it's actually presented by the uh, by the applicant and that's going to take place on August 24th. So there has been no action by planning and zoning uh, other than establishing a uh, public hearing. Uh, okay, uh, 5B is PZC number 20-24 uh, special permit which is which we've just talked about uh, 430 Main Street, George Nujame, Wendy uh, and Mike Winston LLC are the owner. Mixed use building, light manufacturing and office, small format on first floor, three apartments on each of the second and third floors. Uh, to uh, expedite the uh, activity, I've got an application, uh, a motion to approve and I will make that motion to approve application 20-24 special permit, application George Nujame, owner Wendy and Mike Winstead, LLC, uh, location 430 Main Street, proposal mixed use, light manufacturing and office, small format on first floor, three apartments on each second and third floors. One, in evaluating this application, the Planning and Zoning Commission has relied upon information provided by the applicant and if such information subsequently proves to be false, deceptive, incomplete, and or inaccurate, this permit shall be modified, suspended, or revoked. Two, this application is consist consistent with the town's plan of conservation and development. Three, the application meets the criteria and standards of 3.J, common regulation, special permit, and special exceptions. Uh, we've discussed the uh, refuse collection will be housed in a uh, chain link enclosure with slats that uh, we recommend the uh, black chain link, black posts, and the fence will be a minimum of uh, six feet tall, but at least a, one foot above the highest container. Uh, any exterior lighting in that area will be a 90 degree cutoff. And uh, I think that's all we had as far as the discussion goes. Any kind of, do we have a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Peter made the second, uh, open it up for discussion from the commission. Any, uh, any issues, uh, any additions, deletions, uh, corrections? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Just as, just as a point of order, because um, Craig entered the meeting at 716, but oh, you still did. have both alternates seated um, for this application and maybe you'll unseat someone and reseat Craig for the next. We will. For this, because everybody that participated was seated. Hi, Craig. Uh, so all in favor, uh, please, uh, I think we have asked for raise your hands. Okay. Uh, oh, can't vote on the no. <laughs> well, well, it's good. Thank Sorry. you. All right, Mr. Nujay, good luck with that. It's uh, pretty exciting to hear that you're doing what you're doing and uh, Wish you all the luck. I, I understand you've expanded your outside seating area. Is that correct? Yes, I'd like all of you to come out and see it. It's uh, it's very exciting. It's different. It's unique, and it's beautiful. So, uh, I just heard from the fellow that uh, did some work for you that uh, yeah, he uh, described it. And I said, "Geez, I haven't seen it, but it's it, it's kind of hidden, but it's part of a it's kind of a neat." Uh, addition back there. How many seating do you think area do you have? Uh, well, we're approved for 24 seating, uh, 24 chairs right now because of COVID. Yes. 
And uh, so we have 24 seatings out Excellent. there. And the town, town manager came by yesterday and he, he loved it, so. Well, you're aware too that we've, our commission has extended this executive order through the end of the season. So it extends through the end of October. So you don't have to go through the liquor control and the Torrington area health and so forth. You got permission to do, when you spend money like you have, uh, we thank wish you good luck there. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I encourage the commissioner to come take a look and, uh, and we'll do, with the new building, it'll be it'll be beautiful as well, and it'll add a lot to the town. Well, good good luck. Thank you for uh, Thank you. investing in our community. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving along to the next uh, issue, uh, we've got uh, under new business PZC twenty twenty five CGS eight twenty four. Location Whiting Street, applicant Town of Winchester, Department of Public Works. Owner is the Town of Winchester. It's a proposal CGS 824 referral improvements to Whiting Street, including sidewalks, drainage, paving portion. Um, I, when I go through some of these things, I, I lose track. I didn't really remember the uh, complete uh, description of the uh, 824 process and what was required. And uh, let me uh, just unseat uh, John Cooney and have Craig uh, sit in on this one, if I could. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, do we have somebody there to present what the uh, this proposal is? Yes, uh, Weston Sampson is here to do the presentation for you. Um, I don't know if uh, Jim or Bart has anything to say before we get started, but I can bring up the presentation and get going as soon as you're ready. We're, we're ready. Let me just try to share my screen. So there's competition for control in this uh, Zoom, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So does everybody see the um, cover slide? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so as you mentioned, we're here tonight to talk about the Whiting Street Improvements Project. Um, it's here as part of the 824 referral and this is essentially acting as well as a public information meeting. So um, tonight, obviously we have um, Jim Rollins with the town as well as Bart Clark. I'm Lisa Solanus with Wesson and Samson. I'm a team leader in our roadway group and um, project manager for this project. I'm here with Ryan Chmielewski who leads up our uh, landscape architecture group in our Connecticut office. And also on the um, video tonight is Nick DiPalermo who's one of our engineers in the office. So just briefly, um, this is what we're gonna take a look at tonight as we go through this presentation. A quick look at the project area, a little discussion about the grant program that this project is funded under, um, the project goals that we had in mind with this project, existing conditions, what improvements we're looking at, what's gonna be next, and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. So I'm sure everyone here is very familiar with Whiting Street, which essentially runs between Route 44 and Hollibird Avenue. It runs along the Still River. And um, the southeasterly portion is single family residential homes with the northerly portion um, being the historic mill buildings, the American Mural Project, and the mill apartment buildings. Also surrounding the general project area is um, Northwest Connecticut Community College. You can see there's a lot of um, parking lots for commuters and the um, school college buildings um, are to the north and west of the general project area. And so this project is being funded through the state through a competitive grant, which is called Respons Responsible Growth and Transit Oriented Development Grant. 
And this particular project really focuses and fits into the responsible growth side of that grant. And some, some key words when we look at the de definition of responsible growth per the grant is focusing on the use and reuse of reuses of places where private and public investments have been made, protecting states, natural resources, landscape and landmarks, and providing a high quality of life. The um, project was awarded a grant of just over half a million from the state. And throughout the project development process, obviously we're working and communicating directly with the town, but the grant itself is administered through the Connecticut Office of Policy Management and um, also um, Connecticut Department of Transportation. So we began this project roughly a year ago when we started um, more of a, a study concept level preliminary engineering phase of the project. And during that time, we took a, lot, a look at all of the goals and objectives that were set forth for this project. And we had to classify those and, and put those in order of quote unquote importance. So our primary objectives for this project are um, traffic calming, connectivity, reconstructing pavement out there and improving water quality and drainage. Secondary improvements are related to pedestrian lighting and potentials for green infrastructure. And then some of the goals and objectives really are gonna end up being more of a future um, part of this project, which would include major intersection improvements at the Route 44 intersection and any major improvements to invasive species along the river. So this slide um, just shows the overall existing conditions of the corridor. I gave you two different images here. The northerly one is a little bit harder to see the roadway through all the beautiful trees out there. Uh, the southerly image is uh, an image that was taking, taken in you know, fall, winter when the, the leaves are gone off the trees. The only major difference with the picture at the bottom is the hollow bird bridge is under construction there. So in general, as we're talking through this project, we're gonna look at it really in four different distinct sections. The first area we're gonna look at is the Route 44 intersection. Then we'll look at the southerly most section of Whiting Street as you um, get off of Route 44 and head north um, up Whiting Street. We'll then focus on the middle section of the roadway and then the northerly portion uh, adjacent to the mill buildings and to the intersection with Hollywood Avenue. <clears throat> so looking at the existing conditions of the Route 44 intersection, we see that this intersection has a lot of pavement out there and it has geometry such that folks traveling northbound on Route 44 really have a direct shot to head up Whiting Street. And then you also have um, intersecting Whiting Street and almost essentially part of the Route 44 intersection is Strong Terrace, which almost creates two additional intersections coming into the Whiting Street intersection of Route 44. Looking at the southerly portion of Whiting Street, the picture on the top left um, is looking southbound towards Route 44 with the river on your east. You can see the existing timber post and um, metal rope guide rail, which is um, deteriorated to, and is not really functioning as a guide rail there, as well as the poor pavement conditions of Whiting Street in that area. And this photo was taken right around the time that the town was doing um, an overlay out there. Um, and the overlay itself was meant as a um, temporary measure to 
um, hold, tra hold the roadway together over the winter. Um, but as you can see from this photo and a lot of other photos as we move forward through these slides, the existing pavement is in, in poor condition. The picture on the bottom left is uh, looking northbound. The river is on your left now, and that existing retaining wall is on your right hand side. And then the photo on the right hand side is also looking northbound um, as you're headed up Whiting Street. Um, I should um, let me go back there. And obviously, there's no um, amenities, sidewalks for pedestrians there. Now we're in the, the middle section of Whiting Street where we have um, perpendicular parking for the mill apartment buildings. It's permit parking. And, and then again, through this section, we have um, no pedestrian amenities, sidewalks, that sort of thing. The northerly section, you can see some of the pavement conditions here um, in poor condition. Uh, essentially, building to building is used for roadway and the existing sidewalk. Um, the picture on the top right corner, um, this is the entrance to the apartment complex. Technically, the stairs coming down into the sidewalk is not ADA compliant, and that's something we'll be looking at as we move forward. But for the most part through this area, you do have a sidewalk along the westerly side of the road. <clears throat> so again, looking at the overall improvements of Whiting Street, I'm going to look in, uh, explain um, these sections in more detail at a, as a close-up view, but a general understanding of what's happening out there. We're looking at continuing pedestrian connectivity from the existing northerly sidewalk all the way down the project um, length to uh, Route 44. Also looking at improving drainage and water quality through deep sumps with new catch basins, um, providing a consistent width for pavement and narrowing pavement in general for traffic calming purposes and also um, pavement reconstruction the entire length of the project. So let's start at the Route 44 intersection first. So this is a location that we took some time to look at different concepts of what could be done in this area to improve the intersection. And we show three different concepts here that essentially look at different ways to align the three roads that intersect to South Main Street. Because this um, project is a responsible growth TOD grant, um, there's a specific amount of time that you have to get this project constructed before you lose your grant money. And of course you have a, a limited source of funds through this grant program. So it was decided that any major construction or reconstruction of this intersection would be kept as a separate future project so as not to slow down the work through the rest of uh, Whiting Street. <clears throat> One of those reasons for potentially slowing the project down is technically this intersection is within the state right of way, which means anything you do to this intersection and work within the state's right of way has to be approved by the state, by the district DOT office, and would require an encroachment permit. So in order to keep the Whiting Street project moving forward with the funds and the timeline that were allowed for this project, we've essentially slated this for future work for Whiting Street. So now focusing on the southerly section of Whiting Street as you're headed north from Route 44, the um, existing pavement in this area varies anywhere from 20 to 25 feet. And you'll see the pavement widths vary throughout Whiting Street as we go through these three sections. 
what we're looking at for a proposed roadway cross section through here is 22 feet curb to curb. So through this first section of Whiting Street, 22 feet curb to curb, the existing stone retaining wall on the eastern side, on the residential side, will remain. And any roadway, I don't really want to call it widening because we're really narrowing the road, but any um, major work to the road changes in alignment are, is the sidewalk on the river side. A portion of that due to the grades of the embankment of the river will have a short retaining wall that will hold up the sidewalk. And then along that retaining wall will be um, an open rail system similar to the Hollabird Bridge um, that opens up the vista to the river from the sidewalk and Whiting Street. So now the middle section of Whiting Street, again, the proposed curb to curb, if you want to call that, or edge of pavement to curb is going to be the 22 feet in width. Um, this section of Whiting Street under existing conditions varies 27 to 30 feet. So you can see we're narrowing this part of the roadway quite a bit, which really helps with traffic calming. Um, when you're looking at traffic calming, you're looking at physically constraining um, the roadway or providing other elements along the roadway that visually and physically force encourage drivers to slow down. So through this section, we're looking at sidewalk along the easterly side of Whiting Street. You can see there's two crosswalks, one at the southerly end and one at the northerly end of this section. And what's proposed here is a raised crosswalk, which brings up the pedestrian crossing to the actual sidewalk height and provides more emphasis on and more visualization of the pedestrian crossing the roadway. And then the raised crosswalk itself acts as a speed table. Through this area, you see the existing parking for the mill is going to be maintained. We're not proposing any major changes in that area. Now we're at the northerly section. <clears throat> Essentially, we're maintaining the existing sidewalk through here. That entrance I showed to the apartments, we would revise the steps to have a ramp coming down so it's ADA compliant. And then at the southerly end, this crossing here, hopefully you can see my mouse, uh, we're actually doing um, a bump out of the sidewalk and the curb, which shortens your pedestrian crossing and also provides protection to the on-street parking, which is gonna remain. And then again, at the intersection with Hollibird Avenue and Whiting Street, we propose bumping out that corner as well, um, slowing people taking the turn into the Whiting Street from Hollibird, as well as projecting um, on the parallel parking and physically narrowing the road. So what's next for the project? Um, final design, we plan on wrapping up this fall. Then the project will go for an administrative review through OPM and DOT um, over the fall and winter, out to bid and starting construction in spring 2021 and wrapping up construction in the fall next year. So with that, I can open it up to any <clears throat> questions. You, you've showed some landscaping on uh, in the area of the uh, Wall of America side. Yes. So is that, do you have a slide showing what you're planning in there other than what you did show us? Yeah, so actually uh, one thing that I should have mentioned was that this is um, most likely gonna be constructed in stages. Um, the grant is gonna cover so much of the project and then they'll need additional funds to complete the rest of the project. So. The trees at this point, basically all we're showing there is trees, would be part of some future addition to this project. It's not physically being proposed right now. Do you have any uh, lighting along those sidewalks for uh, pedestrians? Great question. 
So again, actual street lighting is not part of this project, but there is consideration to including conduit for future lighting. So the conduit would go in in the initial installation. Right, so any of the sidewalk work, the conduit would be built into that. So then the town would have to then fund whatever, okay. Correct, yeah. And that's, uh, there was talk years ago about uh, continue or having uh, the traffic be in one way. Uh, you still, you look like you got two way traffic coming out of 44. That's correct. So this proposal is to maintain the two directional traffic. I think the one way was some discussions that happened internally, but it was decided to go forward with the two directional traffic. <clears throat> so that whole intersection uh, reconfiguration is something that's a dream in the future. Is that how you left it? Well, I'd like to think that it's a reality in the future, um, but it is to be part of some future improvement out there, not part of the Whiting Street project. So the concept itself to be used, hopefully, to uh, apply for some kind of traffic control at that area and, uh, and submit at least the conceptual drawings for that? Sure, absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Step through the commission. Uh, Will? Where the crosswalk is by Whiting Mills, yes. you're adding an island there, is that correct? Say that again? Where the crosswalk is, right by Whiting Mills on Whiting Street, you're yep. adding an island there? We are... Cars are parked, there's, and you have a tree, and there's like a tree. You're kind of yeah, the so let me, Sure, let me bring that up so we can look at it more closely. Let me share my screen again. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so you're talking about this location here. Right. Um, so we're still maintaining the parking and access to this parking area here. I see what you're saying with the tree right behind this one truck. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Ryan, do you want to talk about that a little bit? This might be something we should look at in a little bit more closely. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we did we did site observations out there several times, probably been to the site a half a dozen times now. Um, and this could be, we took a couple different aerial photographs. So it's more of an artistic rendering at this point. Um, the black and white plans show more detail on how uh, the configuration works. Um, and mainly because of, if you go to Lisa's first slide, the skew of the buildings are so tall, it covered most of the road work um, um, in terms of shadowing and things like that. But um, so I would say those parking spaces were taken in consideration and, and also the, um, the American Mural Project full build out plans were taken into consideration as well um, when uh, deciding on a location for that crosswalk. Um, and if you go, you could also, like in this picture here, you, could, you can barely see anything in between um, the buildings. And so I think this was a stitching point in terms of graphic representation. The intent is to provide access to that parking area, which may be, you know, kind of an unofficial co-op parking area, but the intent is to maintain access to that. Yeah, and Lisa, pull back, uh, pull that, pull back that other image that you just were on that showed the uh, Yep. Yeah. Um, that's, this is partially a reason why this, uh, the crosswalk is skewed there as well. It's not truly perpendicular. Um, we are we are pushing that crosswalk over as much as possible, and really just um, having definition there. But I I could see your concern based on this graphic image. Well, the reason I asked is because in the future, the American Mule Project has talked about having busloads of kids come, and that's the only restriction that's not there now, 
because the other entrances ways are all finished, that would be a new restriction in their entrance. And does that restrict bus access to it to, to load and unload? No, so the, the, there's two entrances into American Mural Project. Um, Lisa, you wanna just point to them, uh, scroll to the right. We're, we're maintaining both of those access. Yes, we're maintaining those. This is one where the crosswalk is, is restricting the entrance. I was just wondering about them with their buses. Yes, yeah, so this is not, this is maintaining that new, um, newly constructed access point, and so is this. This little parking area isn't really part of this new construction. It's almost like a little pull-off area that the um, the mill building on this side uses or has. Um, but the two access points to the American Mule Project, that new construction out there, we're not reducing um, their access. I have a question. Um, and George, just so you're calling on the public, Amy Wynn uh, has her hand up. She's from American Mural Projects. So just let me know when you're opening. One moment, Mr. Weyarda. Um, okay. The chairman will recognize once I, you generally he goes through the commissioners and then he calls on the public. But. And if we, if we could do that, uh, Will, are you all set with your questions? Uh, after being, I've gone to the mills a bunch of times. I know the entrance to the mills is haphazard at best. Mm -hmm. And I'm just concerned about that new obstacle. And I'm just wondering, is that actually needed or it just kind of, I think it's going to be an obstacle for entering the mill. Well, I think that's a valid point because they are expecting to get uh, a lot of school bus traffic to bring in the kids in. So maybe it's something uh, you folks in the design group just uh, look a little bit more about turning radiuses and where the buses would go and the drop off points. So and, are you referring to the um, site access driveway at American Mural? Mm -hmm. so I missed the first part of that question. Well, the point, though, is, is there's going to be a lot of school bus activity from what they anticipate. Mm -hmm. so it would be good to just review uh, the flow pattern of school bus activity, where they'd be bringing the kids in to drop them off, how they turn around and where they would get out. So just to just to add that as to an additional concern, I think Will brought a good point up. Sure, and we're happy to have a, a coordination meeting with the American Mural Project, um, the owners to fully understand um, the um, their intentions on bus circulation. <clears throat> okay, Will, are you set, set for now? Yeah, I'm okay now. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Peter? Yeah, um, well, you've got the bump outs by the uh, apartment building. What's your pavement width going south? So the um, essentially curb to curb width for the roadway is 22 feet. Um, right. In front of the mill apartments, obviously um, it's wider for the parallel parking. Um, the bump outs are, are gonna maintain that minimum 22 feet of roadway width here right. and also at the intersection. So you'll have 11 feet for each each lane. What? Technically, it'll be a 10 foot lane and a one foot painted shoulder. Okay, because uh, you've got fire trucks going through there too. Um, why? I'm just trying to get through my head why you would uh, put two additional crosswalks in there and alternate sides, have the sidewalk on alternate sides of the street. Uh, when you've got college kids walking back and forth from the college to the, their science building on Hollibert Avenue. That's and, a great question. So <laughs> the I've middle, been, sorry. Not very safe in my opinion. Well, so the middle section, there's limited right away. So if we were to do a sidewalk through here, it would, 
most likely be pushed onto the apartment building's property, which means we'd have to get an easement and deal with new property um, impacts with that building, um, with the apartment property. So that's essentially, we're keeping um, the majority of the work on this project within the town's right away. There were, <clears throat> this is Jim. Uh, there was also a couple of other factors involved in that. Um, we felt for safety reasons, we wanted to have those speed tables to slow traffic down. We wanted to keep the pedestrians away from the parking areas that the, uh, the apartment renters have because those people are pulling in and backing out. And then we also wanted to serve the American Mural Project with a sidewalk on their side of the road. Um, assuming that there's gonna be traffic, you know, foot traffic in and out of there as well. So this seemed like the best combination of all of those needs. But from a safety, but uh, you've only got two raised crosswalks out of the four on the road. So if you're looking at safety and you wanna slow traffic down, wouldn't you have all four crosswalks raised? You could raise all four, but really the speeds typically on a roadway are, are lower as you're making your turning movements. Um, if you make a, a left or a right hand turn, you're physically restricted in your speed. Um, obviously the Route 44 intersection approach is a little bit of a, a unique case there. Um, we could look at putting another speed table shortly after the entrance to Whiting Street. Um, has anyone done a traffic count? How many cars actually come in and out of that parking lot during the daytime or over a 24 hour period? Because I don't think you have that much traffic moving in and out of the parking lot versus what you have going in and out of uh, two commercial driveways with the Whiting Mills and the mural project and the potential for a lot more in the future. We did not do a traffic count of the, the in and outs from the parking. Area. Okay, so you have no idea then uh, what the traffic count is for, for those places, facilities. Because with a mural project in the mill, you could have a lot of heavy commercial traffic and you're putting pedestrians on a sidewalk with that type of traffic. I think it could be dangerous. Can I make a comment? Yeah, go, go ahead before you lose the track of what you're talking about, Jen. <clears throat> go ahead, Jen. Yeah, uh, what I'm concerned about as well as the buses and everything else is Momex, when they have to bar back into their dock, they already go across the American Mural Project lawn. And when you get a 53-foot box trailer backing in up to the upper dock for Whitey Mill to unload, you really have a mess. I've taken it, watched them. It's taken them 15 minutes to joggy up there. And that's a, that's a tough back. That's not a, a, a low incline. So you have to leave because they go over the curbs now. What are they gonna do later on when they have the elevated walkways or am I, aren't the elevated walkways gonna be in that area? So we'll have to take a look at um, these access points that you're referring to of the tractor trailers backing in. Um, again, that will be a coordination with the owners of the American Mural Project to make sure that we're accommodating the traffic patterns that they have out there. Um, and we can help look at a safe way to get that truck access into the property. Well, that's all a part of the reason why we're having this meeting and uh, talking about exposure because you get a lot of yeah. you got a lot of years of experience uh, with people involved here today. Thanks, John, for bringing that up. I'll get back to you after the commission goes through, John. Okay. Uh, are you all set, uh, Peter? Uh, those are all I had. Okay, uh, Craig. I really don't have. You know, I'm familiar with the area, but I really. Uh, I haven't seen anything that has caught my attention that uh, I think Peter's made some good uh, observations and 
it's always been, uh, as you know, your daughter lived there one time years ago. So mm -hmm. it's always been tight. It's always been tight. Been there. I think that's going to be the biggest uh, impediment to uh, safety. I think the uh, raised crosswalks, though, to, to slow the uh, speed comes. Uh, I, be a very I, can, I, can, I concur with that 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Uh, Jerry? I had to unmute myself. Could you re display the, the slide that has to do with the Route 44 and the Whiting intersection? The concepts or the existing condition? The, well, I guess either one, I can't remember. The one that has the, um, the fence, not, not the three, not the three proposals, but the, I think the one that came after that. So are you referring to this slide? I think it's number, I can't, it's the one that showed, well, I, I guess my question is, is are you restricting, I can't remember, but are you restricting any part of that entrance? I see what you're saying. From, from 44. I remember there was on one <laughs> side, you were using an existing retaining wall and then the other side, you were putting a, an open fence structure similar to what's on the bridge. Yeah, so this intersection, like I said before, we're not really doing any major physical changes to that Route 44 intersection. Um, the focus is really on Whiting Street. No, I understand that, but I'm curious as to how much you're taking away from Whiting Street on that, on that curve there with the retaining wall. Are you still gonna have uh, the same amount of road space that you have, or is there gonna be like a sidewalk there, or is it just a wall or? Gotcha. So we have the existing retaining wall here, then there'll be a buffer area of roughly two feet between the wall and the, the shoulder line or the lane. Then we have curb to curb, call it curb to curb 22 feet, then we begin the sidewalk. Okay, so you have a retaining, will the retaining wall go all around the curve there out to 44 and sidewalk? No, essentially no. It, it, meet, it matches up great there, um, only where the slope um, really starts to drop off is where a retaining wall is needed. Yeah, so it, it's roughly from here to here. So that first section. In this area, it's much flatter for grading out any proposed work. And, and she'll put a fence that's similar on the Hollowbird Bridge? Yep, so um, these images here are, are from Hollowbird, the Hollowbird Bridge, and what we're doing is it's called an open bridge rail so that you can see the river. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's a more decorative than a guide rail. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just while you've got that slide up, uh, at that intersection is where they have a sign for Whiting Mills. Is that going to still be available to be able to maintain it? Yes. Yep. Okay. You so might want to add that into the slide because the... Uh, I think Bob Geiger, I know I talked to district uh, in to Watertown or uh, Thomaston uh, because they were trying to uh, eliminate that uh, opportunity and uh, years ago it was always there. So we might want to add it to your slides just to have something there as a pre-existing condition. Uh, so they yeah. don't use that. Yep. And on our actual construction plans, it'll be called out to be maintained or yeah. if for some reason it needs to be shifted a little bit, it will be called out to be relocated, but it will be yeah, just, you know, sight line and all that, buzz, yep. but I would definitely add to, uh, to you lose it, you lose it, you get it back. Okay. Uh, so just a, uh, a quick thought. This is Ryan with Wesson and Samson. Um, there was a comment about raised crosswalks at the north and south end. Um, we looked at, um, so to calm traffic really um, at the south end of the connection of Interstate 44, or sorry, Route 44, um, roadway or intersection realignment is truly the, the way to um, handle that problem. Um, at least that's through our conceptual analysis. Um, 
you know, we were out on site and we've seen people just take the leap of faith and in uh, and and heading in a southbound direction, um, trying to gain full speed before they got on 44 and just continue without stopping. Um, there are stop signs there. There are no, there are, um, but it's a clear line of sight going uh, southbound. Additionally, heading northbound on 44, taking a right onto um, Whiting Street. That's another clear line of sight. Traffic, people are just gotten off uh, Route 8 to go into um, downtown Winchester or to get home after a long day. They're trying to just get off the highway as quick as possible and then continue that path off of Route 44. So by doing a, a realignment at the intersection, that's really your best traffic calming measure there. Um, and on the north end at the intersection of Hollibird, we looked at several different options there of treating that intersection, raising the road profile um, at Hollibird Avenue to, to better sight lines looking left and right, turning out of that intersection, as well as uh, trying to get people for you um, at the stopping point. Um, the, geomet the geometry there is very restricted against the old mill buildings. The, there's um, several door elevations we would have to match, um, maintain grade. We'd end up having to fill against the mill buildings on both sides. Um, so the, the best approach um, towards that was creating the bump out um, um, on the apartment side um, to protect cars going in, which in turn would help by narrowing down that open um, intersection that would help calm traffic coming in. Mm -hmm. So these concepts about these intersections, well, at least the one on the 44. So we'd have the ability to have those, uh, those concept thoughts. Uh, so if we try to do something with the state in the future, <clears throat> we'll have those evaluations. Did you, I'm just curious, did you, uh, out of those three options, did you favor one over the other? Yes, and actually the current design of the sidewalk system um, works. Um, with the uh, preferred option. Um, and it's, you know, there might be a little bit of uh, reconfiguration depending on uh, coordination and, you know, really getting a hard look at the intersection through DOT process. Um, but the preferred option was, wasn't it concept three? Okay. Or was it concept oh. two, Lisa, or concept one? I can't recall. Um, concept three, because of the one crosswalk and you're also physically restraining the turns coming off of Route 44 to go into Whiting Street. Well, you're eliminating that straight shot coming down the hill. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, you'll slow the traffic down that way. Yeah, that's, that's uh, good. But that's, so we'll have that availability to... Uh, to Absolutely. Yeah. All right, good. Appreciate their uh, input on it. Uh, the rest of the commission, are we all set or you at this point or we can open it up if something else triggers your mind and then we'll look at uh, who else is uh, in Pam, I know John, we are to, who else is involved? Amy Wynn, Jeff Wynn, has been. Amy, yeah, let's... Uh, Hi there. Amy on what, telephone. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but first of all, it's very exciting to see. <laughs> Second of all, I'm really impressed at how conscientious you are about the Wedding Street neighborhood and of the American Mural Project. So my question, I'm gonna I have two. Um, going back to uh, option three, where you were just describing, um, when you come off. If, if you're headed on 44 eastbound and you turn into Whiting, um, right now you don't have to stop. <laughs> but with the crosswalk, um, you would have to stop. And I, I'm, I'm just curious about the safety of a stopped car there with other cars maybe coming from the other direction on 44 and things like that. I don't know a lot about traffic uh, uh, design the way you do. So that's one question. And then I have a second one. Um, 
One thing that we didn't show with these concepts is it's most likely that you would end up with some kind of right turn deceleration lane to get folks that are turning from route, route 44 out of the through traffic um, so that they have a dedicated area. Um, like we said before, these are concepts. So those are things that we would work out as we dealt with the DOT and the district. And, and we Great. Um, or, so the, oh, the, and I was just going to add to that. Um, a part of the intersection improvement too is right now there's a right in right out of Dunkin' Donuts, I believe. Um, and and there's, so there's no ability to turn left. Um, and we've observed um, vehicles turning right out of Dunkin' Donuts and using that intersection as a quick U-turn um, okay. because there is so much pavement there. It's an easy thing to do for people. So that would hopefully help uh, reduce some of that traffic movement as well. Yeah. So my other question has to do with the other side of the entrance from Hollabird. Um, I noticed that you had narrowed the, um, again, eastbound traffic on Hollaber, then turning south onto Whiting um, to slow it down, so to speak, um, and protect the parking area for um, the apartment building. Um, I was just concerned uh, with buses possibly or the large trucks that do come in for uh, clients at Whiting Mills. Um, uh, that come onto that street. And I was just concerned, again, I don't know about design of traffic or anything, and I don't drive a big truck. <laughs> I don't know how hard it is for a big bus or a big truck to turn in from Hollabird. Now with that narrow, um, narrowed lane that goes southbound and with waiting traffic in the northbound lane potentially. That's great information for us. So. We design roadways based on their, we call it a functional classification. So this roadway is considered a local street, which you typically aren't designing for large tractor trailers to make turning movements into and out of. So this is one location. We'll have to go back and take a look at those truck turns and see if we need to cut that corner back a little bit to accommodate them coming into um, Whiting Street. Um, but another benefit of these bump outs is it also reduces the length of the pedestrian crosswalks, which reduces any exposure time those pedestrians have to a potential um, vehicle conflict. Um, so that's another benefit of that, but that is something we will take a look at. Yeah, and, and I'm all for what you've just described because we have kids who walk from their school to AMP and uh, we even, do walks in the neighborhood and stuff. I, and we love a pedestrian friendly neighborhood. Um, it, again, this is these are areas that I'm not familiar with and mm -hmm. um, just sharing information about the use by Whiting Mills, as well as the American Mural Project. We by no means really have very many <laughs> tractor trailers. Whiting Mills clients really do. And, um, our, and the buses um, that we have, I anticipate it's probably going to be safer for them to enter from that side of Whiting because then they can just take the first entrance and go into the bus parking, which is the northernmost parking entrance for the American Mural Project. Yeah, that's where we have our long buses there. But we're, we can be very flexible. I do want to, uh, another one of the commissioners did talk about this same problem and the, the uh, the unfortunate fact that the trucks already have a very difficult time uh, with all the curbs and everything. And what the result is that the curbs get broken um, with the heavy trucks having to go over them. Uh, and sometimes you have really great drivers, great truck drivers, they know what they're doing. And lots of times you don't, they just don't know what they're doing or they're not used to going in and out like this. Um, so that's some more information. Uh, the other um, uh, uh, request I would have is that um, we are we would be very uh, grateful for a, a meeting with you um, and would love for our partners um, at Whiting Mills, uh, Sandy Evans or whoever else she um, has to join in on that meeting um, because we, we are just very intertwined. 
I think, you know, the point you just brought up is a, uh, a very important contributor to the success of this whole thing is how do you interact with the timing of the construction and dealing with your survival uh, and the, the mill's survival and the, obviously the apartments. So those are, uh, those are the logistical problems that we all have to work out together, but it's, it's absolutely uh, an important consideration. Uh, and that's one of the things I was, uh, that I've got in my notes is uh, when you're talking about this, how, how, the, how does it get staged uh, how is the timing going to be worked out, uh, traffic control, access during construction? Uh, so those are, those are important things that you folks in the design group uh, have to work with, you know, our uh, public works and our uh, government people, uh, Bob Geiger, to make sure that everybody is aware of what's going on, number one. So there's good communication and uh, the awareness of what's happening so that we don't get a lot of surprises and and uh, there's going to be inconvenience because the end result is going to be spe spectacular, but we try to limit it, limit as much as we can the uh, the really discomfort area. So thank, you thank, have, you so thank you so much for uh, uh, hearing my questions. And again, I, I really applaud the commission and, and thank you so much for notifying us about this because um, the way you're approaching this and the thoroughness at, with which you're looking at this is um, very comforting. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Pam's got your uh, contact information, Amy, obviously, and uh, she'll coordinate as the uh, kind of the central figure here to uh, make sure everybody keeps in contact. Uh, communication is the biggest thing that gets lost a lot of times. Um, are, you, are you squared away, uh, Amy, with up? Okay. Uh, John Wiarte, are you still on? Yes, I am, George. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, th this is a, a, gonna be a big timing factor because you have the people uh, that are traveling eastbound on 44, and when somebody wants to make a left turn onto Whiting Street going eastbound, you have the other traffic, and if somebody's parked there on that bridge, like a tractor trailer, and he's in Mickey D's or he's in Dunkin' Donuts getting something, he's got a lane blocked. So that means nobody can get around you, per se, and, and unless everybody's jugged up tight in, the, in that bridge section. And then a lot of trucks will go either way. They'll either want to go right or they'll want to go left when they come out of Whiting Street towards 44. Going left, it can be a bear sometimes, especially, but truckers usually are in there in the afternoon, not at the rush hour traffic. Oh. So it's a little easier. Making the right-hand turn onto 44 is a little bit tighter. Not so much for a box truck or a bus, I would say, but more or less for the tractor trailers that want to take a right onto 44 like they're headed to the Canaan. Um, I haven't seen a tractor trailer want to go left on the Hollibird Avenue from Whiting Street. So I'm not sure about that, but I, I'm given the wrong driver, it could take, a, it could be a scene that you wouldn't want to see. So that's where I'll leave it. Okay. All right. Uh, who else do we have on board for uh, public input on the uh, questions? Yeah, yes. The Blas Chairs from Whiting Mills. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, we're uh, very uh, uh, excited to see the project. We are surprised that Whiting Mills didn't seem to get even a mention in the uh, construction project. We thought we were important to that town. Um, we had been in previous meetings promised that to alleviate danger to people in and around the mill, we would have a sidewalk on our side. And uh, we are looking now at uh, a project which doesn't make any uh, allowance for a sidewalk uh, so that people will come out of our building through the various doors or just go from one side to the other 
are being put in danger. And I uh, wonder what we have done to deserve that. So you've got you've got a sidewalk on uh, it that crosses onto the uh, American well, Bureau no. Project. We gotta... need we need a sidewalk to go all the way alongside oh. our building to Hollabird yeah. Avenue. Hollabird. Yes, which is, was the understanding with this project, and now uh, we see the first uh, architectural drawings. There is no sidewalk. In addition, uh, this is Eva Blacher. Um, and again, we are very excited about seeing that something is gonna happen uh, because it's been 14 or, or more years, 16 years uh, since you know, we took over this building. However, um, it was also uh, talked about, and I think what Amy was saying in some ways, uh, you know, in terms of the traffic with the big bus, and we certainly still have uh, some um, uh, people who come in with big trucks and trailers and whatnot, and it's always very difficult. And uh, actually, we ran into some problems with the American Euro project. But anyway, uh, so we had hoped that when this project uh, came to fruition, we would make it a one way street. It's super dangerous to come out on. Uh, 44 from Whiting Street, and uh, um, it would make uh, a much, much more sense to have it as a one-way street, and uh, that way it could also accommodate Sorry. that a uh, sidewalk that would benefit uh, our building, our tenants, and the college, and the college. So mm -hmm. um, we were a little surprised at um, how this has been. Uh, you know, we have certainly try to make comments about this all these years. You know, I think what you're saying, uh, that early on when there were discussions of, in the first grant application, there was discussion of having uh, Whiting Mills, uh, that street going toward Holliburn, one way toward Holliburn. And right. that's why I brought it up to begin with. So I was a little mm -hmm. surprised to see that two-way traffic. Uh, what's the design team? Uh, why, why did you retain the uh, two-way traffic? Hi, this is Bart from Public Works. <clears throat> the, uh, there was a study done in, in conjunction with the, uh, the fire department the, uh, and the uh, police department relative to one-way traffic, and they, they felt that the one-way traffic um, was an impediment to providing appropriate uh, fire and police protection down that road. And so, and give, given the fact um, that it makes other motions, uh, traffic motions outside of the uh, Whiting Mills or the Whiting Street uh, difficult is and how to, how to get around the, the neighborhood for the people who live on the, the street. Um, they would be forced to pull out onto Route 44 all the time. And uh, as everybody has said, the uh, Route 44 intersection is a difficult intersection to get to get into uh, traffic on Route 44, especially if you're trying to turn left. But that wasn't the point. It was the point was it's gonna be exiting in the direction of Holliburg, not coming out on 44 because it's such a right. dangerous potential right. intersection. Yes. And you've got a fire department that's right there on Holliburg and if there's a fire, why wouldn't you be able to post somebody at the intersection of Whiting and 44 and, and access it as best you needed to to respond to a fire in that complex? Yeah, best, best I, thing I can offer is that we'd have to talk to the fire department directly about what, what they offered for us uh, and then see what their opinions are directly. I think that would be a beneficial uh, approach and get the... Uh, folks that own Whiting Mills and the, uh, and the American Mural Project maybe get together and have a discussion that, that with this. I know it was early on talked about one way toward Holliburg and uh, it might benefit everybody because it also that would also have the potential of slowing that traffic flow down with your raised uh, 
crosswalks and uh, just one-way traffic, but that would afford you the, the ability to have sidewalks on both sides. The other thing that had been talked about many years ago when the first grant application came out was the uh, community college was looking at the potential to do a pedestrian bridge from the campus That's right. uh, to that other side toward you, you folks and to then access on the backside the uh, the other new buildings that have uh, come across. So I don't know how that, if that ever played in or whether it's even talked about. The uh, pedestrian bridge from the uh, campus to uh, Whiting Street is yes. the concept that was discussed many, many years ago um, based on the documents that are in the file. Uh, there's been no action to, from the state's point of view, to bring, bring that to fruition or further planning. Mm -hmm. We did consider that the uh, the location for the uh, crosswalk on the uh, the southerly portion of Whiting Street is in a location that would uh, be favorable if they ever chose to put a, a pedestrian walkway in. Good, good, excellent. Well, I think that this, uh, the one way uh, section that had been talked about many years ago, I think I was still on the board of select <laughs> at the time. Uh, it's an important consideration early on in this uh, part of the discussion, because it doesn't sound like it would change a lot of your design other than adding a sidewalk on the uh, Whiting Mill side, but it would also, uh, I think, eliminate that dangerous uh, access from Whiting uh, Street to uh, Route 44, where you've got that multiple intersection there with uh, strong terrace. But it, it, this is, I think, just having this uh, session tonight will be uh, an important uh, opportunity to consider a couple of the loose ends that, uh, that I see here and obviously what's been described. And if I may add one more thing, and if we were able to have a um, sidewalk, uh, we could conceivably also attract some nice uh, retail Restaurants. or restaurant or something to Whiting Mills, which there is space to do something like that, and which would improve the building even more and, and would, the town and the, for the town as well. So, um, you know, I think all of those uh, things should be taken into consideration. And I think for the safety uh, reasons, yes. it, it is almost uh, imperative that you make it a one-way street, especially if when the American Mural Project comes into full swing and when there is going to be a lot more people and traffic and um, etc. That's a valuable uh, contribution to the conversation and I, I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have, uh, let's go back, anybody else from the public have comments or uh, contribution to the discussion? How about the uh, town? Do you want to add some more comments with regards to the evaluation you made uh, to contribute to the design where it is? Um, yeah, this is Jim from Public Works. Um, <clears throat> another aspect, we, we really do, our first choice would have been to go to a one-way street. Um, we met resistance from emergency services. They, they didn't like the idea. Um, we also don't necessarily stop the problem at, uh, route, at the Route 44 intersection. Uh, we certainly minimize it a little bit, but Strong Terrace still needs a place to go. Um, and if Strong Terrace still exits and goes left, um, it's, you know, we don't get the full benefit of having the one way street there. And I, we would probably end up with a mutiny if we made those people turn right to go down Whiting street, to go down Hollabird to get out. Um, maybe not, but I, I think they would, there'd be a lot of pushback from them too. Um, but no, our first choice was to go with a one way street. Um, it would simplify a lot of things for us. Mm -hmm. So. I'm happy to relook at that. And if we could get some, some people to rally around that rather than, you know, the two way, um, that would certainly get my support. I just don't know that we're going to get anywhere with it. Um, so having said that, um, 
you know, how do we, what do we do next? Well, you have a lot of support from certainly Whiting Mills and all the 60 tenants and probably from the American Mural Project as well, uh, when there are going to be lots of kids around the streets and uh, two-way traffic would be dangerous and a potential liability to the town. I, th I think that uh, this really calls for a, uh, a, a second uh, public uh, involvement here to, uh, to talk about this, because I'd like to hear why, uh, from the public safety, uh, the fire department, why there's an objection. I, I just don't understand, uh, because I haven't heard that side of the discussion. So uh, I think uh, if we could be involved from the planning commission as well, I know I would want to see it. I imagine everybody else is sitting on the commission uh, uh, would also be interested in it because that that's such an important part of this eastern part of our community to get this thing done right uh, with this investment and uh, and really uh, make this be a real successful corner for us and that would finish off that whole area uh, so I don't know who who would lead that uh, from the standpoint, Jim, who would uh, coordinate that so we could have another meeting? Well, I, I guess that would be my office would bring it to the to the attention of the emergency services people, mm -hmm. and either get a you know a written narrative that we distribute amongst you know the, all the interested parties. Um, maybe we get the American Mural Project and the Whiting Mills people to you know, send in their, their positions in support of one way, but also while they're supporting the one way, don't, don't stop thinking about what negative impacts that may cause so that you're all looking at it through, you know, you, we all may think it's the right thing, but because we want what we get from it, but what, are, what may we lose from it? So I think try to keep that yeah. in mind. Well, the strong terrace um, uh, residents, Jim, is uh, it's an important, uh, you know, contributing uh, commentary from that area for sure. How many people live up there, and and they only have that way to come out? Is that right? I don't know. I've never been up there, so. Yes, it's it's that's that's the only exit, um, okay. and there's a couple of dozen houses up there. Um, now the other the other part of the equation is if we run all the traffic one way down Whiting Street, when it gets to Hollibird, it's got to go either left or right. Right. And then we've already got a lot of crazy traffic at on on Park Place um, Park Place West, you know, d directly across from the Dairy Queen. That intersection is getting busier and busier and busier. So we funnel all the traffic that used to go out the other way there, and that's gonna have issues. So as a town, we were thinking of it and its effects on everybody, not just the effects of the people on Whiting Street and Strong Terrace, but you know, that doesn't mean we made the right call. That's just, you know, we made that call because of you know what we had, but if we had more support going the other way, I perhaps, we could swing the naysayers over, you know, but it's certainly worth putting that question out to the powers that be. Good. Good. Yeah, that would be more, much, much appreciated. I think that's a, a good plan, Jim, if we should, and we should not waste any time and put something together because it's important to get yeah, through this end phase and, and get this thing rolling so we can get it into place in 2021. Can right. we just expand on something Jim brought up of having to reroute traffic essentially so that to get out of Whiting Street, you're gonna to have to go up through the Hollerbird intersection. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind some of the existing um, site distance constraints at that intersection because of the geometry of the approach and the adjacent mm -hmm. bridge. Mm -hmm. um, as Ryan had mentioned earlier um, in this discussion, we did look at some improvements there, but there would be uh, quite a bit of work up and adjacent to the Whiting. So it's just another um, potential impact of changing the, the circulation flow to one way northbound that we'll just have to be 
cognizant of? Well, your turn from uh, Whiting taking a left on Halliburton, you're right. It's a very blind uh, point there because of change in grade and so yeah. forth. So that, but it's good to have to be able to get the discussion because then you then you really can weigh the pros and cons and and uh, hopefully come up with a, a consensus at least of the the people that are actually living in this environment, uh, not just us that visit it occasionally. Uh, hopefully, more in the future. But um, uh, Will, did you? There, there's a, also. I'm sorry. There's yeah. also some pretty difficult geometry for trucks turning off of Hollowbird onto North Main going either direction. Though those corners are very tight and there's you know the traffic it, it's there's a lot of traffic and it's tight tight corners. So there was a lot of functional reasons why you know we had to we, we've got to give this a very serious look. And, and we shouldn't, we could think about it forever too. So it's a matter of let's get the people together and, uh, and then Agreed. If, if the reasoning is put there and the, the, the rationale is everybody understands it, I think you, it, then at least you go into this because you're not going to do this a couple times in our lifetime. You know, it's important to, to consider it now because we got good time, we got the money committed, and we got good people interested in it. And bringing this forward. So, um, Will, did you have something? Well, I was just reviewing the dimensioning between the two buildings. And I see that the uh, mills have some garage doors there. Mm -hmm. And some of their doors open up pretty wide. If you got garage doors, if they're accessible, now you got to make a dip in the sidewalk for a truck to go across. No, those are not used for garages. These are not used for garage. Um, they are doors that have been there forever. And we would be very glad to move to doors that open inside if we uh, come to a satisfactory agreement. Mm -hmm. Because you already have three and a half feet there. That's not roadway. I'm so, sure I don't understand what uh, what you're saying. Sorry. Well, between the two buildings, it's 7, 14, 20. By the time they get the seven foot sidewalk on the other side, the seven foot parking spot, the 11 foot for the road, the 10 foot for the road, there's three and a half feet left over in front of your building. And okay. you park cars in there now, right? So, no, we no, no, we, no do we do not. No, we do not. Do your tenants park there? No. 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 So there's actually room for a small sidewalk. That is correct. Yeah, right. That's all we want. That's all we want. And I think it would be good for the safety of uh, people going from the college to the American Mural Project, people from the American Mural Project say going to John's Deli or to uh, decide that they want to have a snack on, uh, on the green. Um, you know, as it is now, it's, uh, you know, if you have cars barreling both sides, it's a little dangerous. It's a liability for the town. Well, I think Jim uh, Rollins is going to uh, spearhead a uh, uh, information meeting so we can hear more of the justification for, uh, you know, the decision making and hopefully uh, with good, because obviously these are really serious input, uh, very well thought out and uh, you can mm -hmm. hear the, the pros and the cons and, and then hopefully there'll be a decision made on which way it's going to go and everybody will kind of uh, at least see the, uh, the reason for that type of decision and, and this is such an important time now we've got an opportunity. Uh, Peter. Yeah, so I'm assuming then the design team has not met with any fire or police who, with this new plan, they've not seen this new plan to see if it's acceptable to them or from a safety standpoint. Um, they've obviously not included the mural project or Whiting Mills. So then I'm also assuming the college also has not been included in this discussion because they're a big player there too. Yeah. Yes, good point. Okay, I, this is the value of this kind of a uh, presentation so we can see if there's any 
areas we can improve on and let's get it right. Um, uh, any other uh, people from the public that uh, want to com comment on this? How about the commission? John uh, Cooney, you're not seated, but uh, you're welcome to contribute. Well, um, thank you. Um, I do go down that road quite a bit, and um, it is very tight there where those two buildings are. I drive a, a big pickup. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, navigating through there while somebody's coming out with the traffic on that, uh, with the cars parked on that uh, apartment side, um, and then talking about adding another sidewalk, it, it's going to get really tight there. It's kind of hairy now, and I just drive a pickup. I'm not driving a bus or a uh, or a um, tractor trailer. But also, when you come out, when you're going south, and you come out there onto 44, and you want to take a left. Uh, to go up to the bridge to get onto Route 8, it's very, very difficult uh, to see right out of there. So when you were saying one-way street, a big light bulb went off on my head because I'm like, that would be, you know, you know, I hear the negatives and the positives, but that would really fix a lot of problems there. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's well. Right. Okay. Uh, anybody else on the commission have uh, anything additional? I think Jim, if you could coordinate uh, putting this together and uh, getting the, your, your design team here for the town and park, uh, I'd, I'd like to be notified from the commission and we'll get as many commissioners that wanna participate. Obviously the, the, uh, the people involved with Whiting Mills, the uh, American Mural Project, the community college, what Peter had brought up, the, uh, the life safety uh, aspect of these uh, plans, uh, Maybe we should try to get something uh, fairly soon, and uh, that we can move the design team into a, you know the final area of uh, design. We'll do. Okay, great. Uh, all right. If we don't have any other uh, issues with this, this is not a, a public hearing. Obviously, it's a it's an informational presentation for an eight twenty four uh, consideration. So if we don't have any other comments, uh, we'll move into uh, making a uh, recommendation. Is that acceptable? All right, I'd like to, uh, in order to keep this thing moving up, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application, uh, uh, which is re really a, a recommendation for a positive referral to the Board of Selectmen on uh, application 20-25 CGS 824 referral, applicant town of Winchester, Department of Public Works, owner town of Winchester, location Whiting Street, proposal CGS 824 referral, and to forward uh, this uh, positive referral to the Board of Selectmen in reference to the proposed improvements to Whiting Street, including uh, sidewalk drainage paving portion as presented at, the, at this 27 July uh, regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, with the uh, stipulation that we have an additional meeting uh, called, uh, coordinated by Jim Rollins, uh, uh, Director of Public Works, so that we can get the players that are involved here, Public Works, uh, the uh, life safety, the fire uh, police and so forth to uh, uh, discuss and uh, get this thing to move to the next stage. We have a second. Do we have a second for the motion or does it fail? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, further discussion from the commission? Without hearing any, all in favor of the motion? Aye. There we go. All right, very good. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation. That certainly is what we're all here for. Hey, George, can we just clarify the vote on that motion, please? I, okay. I got George, Jerry, and Craig in the affirmative. And so I'll need to know how Willie and Pete vote. Willie, what's your position? I think it needs a lot more work before you can actually uh, recommend it. 
So I'm not quite sure why we're recommending it to, with an affirmative if we all got these questions. Well, I think there's more effort that has to be going on in the uh, design. We have, it's not a final design that we've seen. It's the concept that I'm making a recommendation on. It's why, why I made the motion so we could keep it moving. Uh, if you feel that uh, doing that would preclude uh, further discussion, then uh, it's a valid point. George? Yes. Yeah, um, because the time factor is limited with this, uh, I would say that since we're going to have a, a hearing on this in, at the end of next month, I would assume that the, that the engineering firm would actually have these answers, have answers to these particular issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, my concern is we don't want to lose the, the half a million dollars for a very positive project for the town. Mm -hmm. So I think we can work these out and I'm sure the, the, the engineering firm will do the same as well. But you know, normally we don't hear, we don't talk about this until we actually have the hearing to basically say yay or nay to the project. Well, I mean, we've had the discussion, uh, but I, that's why I added the, uh, the additional part of that, that we should have a sup supplemental meeting with the uh, people that are uh, real stakeholders here. Uh, so I guess it's a, a, a conditional recommendation, but- uh, These meetings will be in a timely fashion? Yes. So, and the designs will be done? I mean, you're gonna have to do some redesigning too. Well, not, not, not that critical. I mean, if you're talking about adding a sidewalk, you've already got sidewalk that's coming over on the American Mural Project side. You could continue that down on that side. I think the critical part of this is one-way versus two-way. And I know that whole issue was discussed at length years ago. I know when I was sitting as a selectman. And I think that that would be uh, the, the critical issue here. Uh, and I think that would improve a, an awful lot of uh, issues in the uh, in the access to 44. Uh, obviously, there's turning radius that uh, has to be discussed coming on to Hollabird come from uh, from Whiting. Uh, so those issues have to be discussed and then uh, re resolved. All right, I'll vote for it. Just I'm just worry that it's not going to, the problems aren't going to get addressed. I'm, I'm with you. I think that's why I wanted to make a conditional uh, okay. positive referral, but th that extra step oh, no. should be taken. Okay. Uh, Craig, what was your, did you uh, have some uh, reservations? Is Craig still on? He is, but he's muted. You, you got there me now? You go. Sorry are. about that. <clears throat> no, my concern, I, I, I have the same reservations that all of you have expressed, <clears throat> but for the same token, we've been through the uh, this before in town, where if we let this project fall behind, we're gonna lo lose. I think we should continue, I agree wholeheartedly and Jimmy to get a meeting together and all of the interested parties and hammer this thing out quickly so we can go forward. But I would be in the affirmative to go forward with the town to keep the project alive. Okay, I think, so we gotta, when we word this, uh, Pam, uh, it's definitely not just a clean, uh, you know, <clears throat> no uh, further discussion, uh, positive recommendation, it's with that, uh, that part of it has got to be a second uh, public hearing, if you will, of the uh, people involved, uh, the, the uh, stakeholders in this neighborhood, including uh, fire department, uh, the emergency response folks, the police department, so forth. But we should be able to get that timed uh, fairly rapidly, I think. Don't you think so, Jim? Yes, on my, on my list of um, groups to contact is the residents of Strong Terrace, Whiting Mills, American Mural Project, the Whiting Street Apartment Building, uh, the town manager's office, um, emergency services, the college, and then uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. That, that sounds pretty complete. All right, any other comments before we, uh, we've got a, a motion in a second? I didn't hear from P. 
Pete either. Pete, how are you voting? Peter, I thought you you voting against it uh, just because of the safety issues and design as it's presented right now. Uh, You're not I, in favor. Okay. I cannot pr prove that. I agree. We need to the project needs to move forward, but it needs to move forward for the safety of pedestrians and traffic both. So I cannot. Okay. Vote in the affirmative. Okay. All right. You've got the uh, poll of the uh, commission, Pam. Okay. All right. So there, there's the answer. It's a, a conditional uh, motion. Uh, to go to the next stage, which is a uh, follow-up meeting. Okay, very good. That closes this issue for this meeting. Thank you everybody for uh, the participation and uh, attending. Thank you. All right, uh, number seven on our agenda is approval of minutes, July 13th, uh, a regular meeting. I have a motion on that. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll okay. second that. Got a second from Greg. Any uh, discussion with regards to the motion? All in favor? All approved. Damn, I'm abstaining because abstaining I wasn't here at the last meeting. Okay. Oh, and uh, Jerry, thanks for, we've got all, everybody has uh, done their assignments with regards to POCD. Now all we have to do is be able to sit in a room and, and hash it out when we can, uh, appreciate it, thank you. Um, okay, communications, Pam? None. Nothing? Nope. Okay, uh, staff report? Um, I don't have a formal staff report. I don't have any new development to report. Um, we're getting new homes. You know, we're, we're surprisingly getting New homes. I'm getting reports from contractors that they can't get lumber. Mm -hmm. um, that, that you know, there's um, a run on lumber. I've had a lot of swimming pools come in um, for building permits. I'm reporting on. Um, I, I I don't have any new concrete projects to report. I have talk of some, but again, until they until they apply, we you know we we won't really talk about them. Okay. Uh, we have any other uh, business anybody wants to bring forward? And George, just uh, where do we stand on zoning enforcement at this point? I know our enforcement officer has been out with some health issues and uh, are we going to get someone else to do zoning enforcement or just let it lay? Yeah, the commission may not know. Mark is self-quarantining. He had a... Um... He had a temperature, he had a high fever. So we, we are, uh, today is day one of week two of his self-quarantine. He'll, he's expected back um, pending a, a second negative reading. His first test was, was negative. Um, so hopefully he'll be back on August 3rd. In the meantime, um, no one's being held up in terms of, you know, projects that need zoning permits. I'm signing off on them if I feel comfortable signing off. You know, there, I think there's one where it, there was a lack of a survey, and I'm just not comfortable. So um, I, I didn't hear that one. But zoning enforcement, yeah, I, I, I haven't not I, I haven't taken any new enforcement in the last, since the last meeting. So you're filling in the uh, void at this point, is that right? If there's a complaint, yes, I and zoning permits, yes. Okay. No, thank you for doing that. You know, I think from that standpoint, uh, with regards to uh, our concerns, uh, we had the new shame uh, application, but just driving around there today, uh, if we could only get some cooperation to clean that up, Peter, you've made a lot of comments about the way the dumpsters are placed and it's really a, a shame back there. We should yes. really spend some time uh, trying to get that whole area to get people interested in cleaning up their racks back there because it's it's so visible and it's and it really is not a very pleasant area to be going around it's, it really needs some attention um, could i interject here for a second yes certainly uh i thought i was 
in form some some years ago. I, I can't recall how many that the uh, Council of Litchfield, uh, you know, the the, the towns at Litchfield yeah. County that made up, you know, Winstead, yeah. Harlington, and all that. And I thought that they had put together like they had a, an engineer that we could use on a, a pro rata basis. And I thought that there was other skills that were going to be made available to the towns on a temporary basis. Is any of that available to us or am I having a uh, illusionary experience here? I remember this very poignantly. I, you know, I've been on these land use boards for about 14, 15 years. Mm -hmm. I think it was about three or four years ago. Just like they rent the equipment or they can lease the various equipment. I thought they had they were going to make access or accessible to the towns, skilled people such as, because we have no, we, we didn't have anybody with any engineering experience at the time mm -hmm. and they were going to be made available. Has that ever come to fruition or what? Does anybody know? I don't know. I don't know. Pam, but did you have access to that or not? Uh, you know, I, I know that, um, they have uh, they had put out an RFP for engineers, you know, when uh, the Wetlands Commission may require, you know, an right. consultation. And, um, you know, one of the engineers, we, we, we have other engineers that, w that we seek for that purpose. Um, zoning enforcement, I've never heard of that. Like if you're looking for, if you're thinking zoning enforcement, because you, you have to remember that each, town has its own zoning regulation so to you know familiarize yeah. yourself with a town's zoning yeah, okay. regulations and then review it in the scope of whatever the project is or the violation um i i just don't i i you know i don't maybe you know i was having a moment dream or something but i thought you know this was about the time of the town's demise and we were scrambling in 100 directions and i i thought that uh, uh the uh, that's where they, that council was established to try to help to coordinate uh, services amongst the towns. I know down in Milford and areas like that, mm -hmm. that they share, they have many, many shared services, mm -hmm. uh, you know, amongst the towns, mm -hmm. but of course they're larger and uh, maybe they're more organized. I, I just, I pose the question. That's all. I'm not, that's all. I have nothing further to say. <clears throat> Anybody else tonight? Okay, so if uh, we don't have anything else, then uh, we've got the uh, POCD. We've got to start uh, you know, as soon as we can get together. Actually, if we we can have a meeting with the commission as long as we're not having a public hearing where we get the outside in. Uh, we have our sewer and water meetings at the uh, selectmen's room, and we just space out in the room and and then they uh, it is actually uh, in compliance i think with the foia so long as it's a subcommittee george so long as that subcommittee isn't com is comprised of only three individuals because if you get four it's a quorum and then no, no, we could advertise a meeting an agenda bob's not letting people in i mean you know that he's water and sewer you know like that's that's a whole different thing, huh? No, but they're not, you know. Why are we not, why can't we, we're, we're a meeting. I, I'm not the staff person for, for water and sewer, but mm -hmm. land use wise, that wouldn't comply with FOI. If you have a meeting, you must, you know, if you have a quorum of the board, it, there has to be an agenda filed and the public has to have access to the meeting. So it's either, if we're in person, then anyone who would like to come can come. And, 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 you know, so the guidance that we had gotten from Bob where, you know, that if it's only four individuals and select guests, that won't fly. You have to, you know, the chances that maybe someone can make the case to Bob that, well, we don't get anyone to show at these meetings. No, no you That's can't make that assumption. But yeah. you can't limit, you can't, if, if for some reason you were to suddenly have 12 residents of the town interested in 
attending, you know, a special meeting for POCD, you'd have to let them in. No, no, I, I totally understand that. Right. But that was after that last meeting, you know, and, and, you know, you have to, it's either all or nothing, but it's not select because that then you're not complying with FOI. Okay. All right. Well, we don't need additional trouble, but then we, we may have to do uh, maybe our next meeting, uh, which we, we don't have any public hearings on our first meeting in August, do we? Nope. All right, so maybe what we could do, we'll do a Zoom meeting and uh, the primary issue on that will be the POCD so we don't let this thing just uh, stagnate. Uh, and if for nothing else, we'll figure out who has to do uh, from what department in the town to uh, freshen up some of the data, the, the, the boilerplate, but we've got concepts. Uh, everybody that wanted to contribute did and uh, we'll just share that with every the rest of the commissioners. And uh, is, is that objectionable? We focus on that the first meeting in August. Yep, I have no objection to that. Okay. All right. So why don't we uh, focus on that for the uh, the first meeting in August, and uh, we'll get everybody's comments and get it out to everybody. And uh, we'll just sit down and we'll talk about it. We'll do it with Zoom. And uh, we seem to know how to operate this now, thanks to Pam. <laughs> uh, sure. So that's what we'll focus on. George, I'd just like to there. say that this was actually an exceptional meeting. We had over 18 people on this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody, including the participants, have gotten the idea of, of uh, I think you have a lot more control and more order over the meeting. People mm -hmm. were using the chat facility in order to raise their hand and to say things and like if Pam were to coordinate the chat and like she did tonight and sort of say somebody has a, you know, everybody goes in line as to the order that they put their chat message in, she sure. could actually control that. And I think it was a very, it was a, a worthwhile and you saw the power of the of the meeting with all the different people coming involved and really coming to a, I think a, a, a decision that you normally wouldn't have gotten in the, in the traditional town hall meeting. Because mm -hmm. I think it'll people a lot more comfortable coming in from their homes Mm -hmm. They're in a comfortable environment and they're thinking, you know, they have time to think and post it. And I think it was just an exceptional meeting. And I think that uh, the POCD will work very well in this format. Good. Appreciate your comments. Uh, I, and that is a positive to everybody that sits here on this commission and uh, Pam's work. I mean, this, uh, we've got a lot of people that are interested in this community right now that are doing it for the right reasons. And it really makes you proud to be a part of it. Um, all right, well, with, with that uh, being the case, uh, we need a motion for adjournment. So moved. Okay. I'll second. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Have a good evening, folks. Stay safe. Thank you, George. Hey, Craig, your sign is not up yet. Ah, I thought you were putting it up. You told me you were coming by. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, I'll give you 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you.